It's 2024, which means the Porsche Cayenne has been around for over 20 years now. And that means you can pick up very cheap examples like mine here on the left. This is my personal Cayenne. It's my daily driver. I've had it almost a year now and it cost me under £5,000. However, they are still making the Cayenne. And if you want the top, top of the range car, that would be the Porsche Cayenne Turbo e-hybrid GT package in coupe, guys, which we conveniently have here. This one as specs costing a shade under £170,000. So today I want to put both of them next to each other and see just how far the KN has come in its 21 or so year life cycle. So the Porsche KN first went on sale back in 2003 with this, the 955 generation. It was initially offered with a 4.5 litre V8 engine, which produced around 340 horsepower. And then you could get the turbo, which had an incredible 450 horsepower. Now really the Porsche Cayenne, the 955, it was the first performance SUV well, ever. It started this chain reaction that we are really experiencing now where everyone wants a performance SUV, the Lamborghini Urus, the Audi RSQ8. These are all as a result, of the Porsche Cayenne. Porsche did it first. So when they made the Cayenne, they wanted to make sure that it still carried forward some of that performance heritage and feel in how the car drives. And we'll get onto that in a little bit, but most importantly, this was a true off-roader. It has locking differentials. On better models than mine, you can get air suspension and also we have a low range gearbox. So this truly is capable off-road. And most people forget about the 955 KN Turbo S, which only ran for one year in 2006. Very few numbers of cars made, partly because of their insane price tag at the time, but it produced 520 horsepower from that same 4.5 litre V8 block, which made it the second most powerful car Porsche had ever made at the time, only behind the Carrera GT. So these cars do carry some real, well, history, and provenance, and I think they are now quite special, especially when you can pick them up so cheaply. And this here is essentially the £170,000 modern day equivalent to that 955 KNS, just 18 years later, because this is the most powerful KN you've ever been able to buy. 520 horsepower back in that 955 Turbo S, this one 730. I mean, it's astronomical. Now it generates that power, I'm pleased to say, chiefly from a four litre V8 engine, which is very similar to what you do find in the Audi RS Q8 and the Lamborghini Urus. However, this has a very intelligent e-hybrid system, which gives a bit of an extra boost on top of that, but also allows you to retain pretty impressive fuel figures. And I'll give it away already. This is far more economical, believe it, with 730 odd horsepower than my V6 with 250 horsepower, almost twice as much. It's also capable of doing 44 miles of range full electric, which I think is really quite impressive. And we'll get onto that a little bit more when we drive the car. It's also got some crazy trickery when it comes to rear axle steering, Porsche torque vectoring, gargantuan carbon ceramic brakes with absolutely massive banana calipers. So we'll compare the performance of both of these cars when we go for a drive. We'll try and do a 0 to 60. I wonder if there's a road anywhere in this country where I can do a 0 to 60 in that V6 KN, because it is quite slow. Um, but this one, it should be no problem whatsoever, especially with its launch control. So before I show you inside the two cars and we go for a drive, let's have a quick walk around of the exterior, because I had these both parked in my carport when I picked the other KN up yesterday. And I noticed if you come right beside them, dimensionally they're almost the same profile they're about the same height i think my kn slightly taller but lengthwise there's not much in it and width wise they're actually about the same of course the one i've actually got on loan is the coupe and you can still get the full size kn but interestingly these two are almost identical but specification wise they couldn't really be any different because i've gone for very small minimalist 18 inch wheels on my car with winter tires at the moment and move around to the back i've got the quad exhaust which was an option on the v6 these didn't come as standard with quad exhaust but i actually really like the look of that but they're moving around to the new car insane 22 inch wheels with those massive calipers as you can see and move around to the back probably my favorite thing on this car the twin titanium exhaust pipes. These look absolutely, well, just menacing is the only word. And if I put it in perspective, put my hand outstretched, it's about, yeah, it about covers it. My fist would fully go into there. In fact, I'm not gonna try it, but I could probably get my head inside that. Whilst we're up here, I should probably just, you know, this is a car review actually, I should try and do 
something that's quite useful. Um, let's just look at the boot really quickly. So um, this one, see a nice electronic tailgate. Mine doesn't have that. We can lower the air suspension from these toggles here, just like on the Range Rovers that I've had before. Um, fairly good size boot, considering this is the coupe. It's about 450 liters. I think the full size car is closer to 700. So that's a bit more similar to my KM, but it's, it's absolutely fine. And so if we just move over to my car, actually this is embarrassing because I think I was meant to go to the tip in this and I haven't yet. So it's going to be full of, yes, it's full of cardboard and um, Leanne Moriarty books. I thought you liked these, Katie. Why are you throwing this away? Didn't I buy this one for you? Yeah. Well, listen, if anyone wants uh, Apples Never Fall by Leanne Moriarty, then please um, send an email to hello at itsjoel.co.uk and I'll send this out to you free of charge. <laughs> um, but look, if we just try and see past all of the rubbish back here uh, it is it's a very good size boot and something this has over the newer KN which I think you know where I'm going with this um, it's very cool is of course the split hatch where you can do this I love that I mean I to be honest I actually never use it I don't think I've ever used that apart from on video showing you look how cool this is um, I replaced the struts on this so they're holding up very nicely that's something that does fail on these quite commonly um, and yeah so Big boot on this, also a big boot on that. The full size KN, the newer one, has a bigger boot than even this 955. And then I'll just take you around to the front of the cars to look at the engine. So, of course, this car just has an engine, no battery. So, now this is quite an iconic engine because this is the same engine you would find in an R32 Golf. 250 horsepower, six cylinders, uh, makes a really good sound actually. But I will admit, in this over two ton KN, it's not enough power. This thing does feel pretty uh, pretty strained when it comes to acceleration. And I think some people go for the V6 over the V8 uh, for economical reasons, because on paper, these are meant to be more economical than the, the V8s. But I find in reality, that's not the case because you're always laboring this engine to get to 70 miles an hour or whatever it is. Um, but we'll talk about it in future content with this car. It's been incredibly reliable, this engine. That is one thing I can say for it. It's why I've ended up keeping this car as my personal daily driver for almost a year now, because it's just been extremely cheap, reliable, and painless to run. And then round to the front of this, you can't really see that much because it's got this wonderful engine cover over the top of it. Four liter V8 block, obviously covered in all this plastic. It's a big old engine and it's amazing what they managed to package in here. Um, obviously, this has the hybrid system to it as well. That's enough waffle. I suggest we, I don't know which one to start with. I think we should probably start with my one. We'll, we'll jump inside, have a look at the interior. There's quite a few differences. This has got some really special stuff inside, like a passenger display screen. Then we'll go in this and we'll compare some performance figures and all that good stuff. So let's start with my car then, which is the 2005 KN. And uh, when you first jump inside this, it does feel almost like Range rover -y. It feels like an off-roader actually, I suppose is the best way of putting it. You sit quite high up, you notice how large the wing mirrors are. Great view out the front, actually great view all around. Big windows in this car. The wheel's massive and it just feels very rugged with these big grab handles, big chunky gear stick. And uh, yeah, you've got the double sun visor situation. In fact, there's actually five sun visors. You've got this little one here, big sunglasses holder. Yeah, all the things you would sort of expect in an SUV, but it's got a Porsche badge. It must've been so weird when this thing came out for people who'd always been buying Porsches to sort of have one of these as their family car. It must've just been the strangest thing because also if you're used to Porsches at all, you'll have the familiar five dials in front of you in this which you'll, you'll recognize. You very much feel like you're in a Porsche, despite the fact it's big, it's chunky, it feels like an off-roader. In terms of controls and stuff to do in here, though, you can very much tell this car is almost 20 years old. Got some very basic air conditioning controls down here, which I like, you can slide to close with Porsche here. This car has got an aftermarket Apple CarPlay system, a wireless one, which actually works stupendously well. Um, I'm really glad it has it. I bought it with it in. It's not something I would have ever sought after. I like things to be original, but as a daily car, this has been incredibly helpful having Apple CarPlay um, and it works, yeah, like I say, very, very well. Very simple gear stick with manual selections as well. And then just below that, we've got the controls for the differential and gearbox. Now, I believe if we pull up once, that puts us into uh, locked diff. And then if we push up again, 
it gives us the low range, or they call it, the reduction is what Porsche call it on this. So that's essentially low range gearbox and then long lock when you go again uh, to give you the differential. Now, if you have a higher spec model, just here would be another toggle like this with air suspension controls. And in the facelift, there became a sport mode as well, where you could actually adjust the suspension. This doesn't have the air suspension. It's uh, sort of one size fits all really. And that's basically it in here. There's loads of places to store stuff. It's very practical, very well thought out. It's very comfortable. I've got electric seats, but that's about it. And I like the simplicity of this thing. It makes it feel rugged. It's fairly simple and there's not all that much to go wrong. So it's lovely inside. Let me quickly show you the back um, to show you how much space there is back there because you might be quite surprised. Back here then, another sea of black in this car because it's a very boring black leather interior. And um, it's really spacious. You notice how high the roof line is. I'm pretty short to be honest, I'm only five foot 10 or so, but uh, there's no problems for room. This seat is in my driver's position. And as you can see, there's, you know, I could fit a bus in between my knees in the back of that seat. Got some cup holders down here amongst all of these jackets. Um, very convenient. In fact, you can access them from the front, which is useful sometimes. If we pull this down, we have a little storage unit, which is full of lighters. Oh yes, that was the mother-in-law, wasn't it? Why did she give us all of those lighters? It was from our wedding. Oh, it was from our wedding? Yeah. What, and they were just spare? Yeah, we bought like hundreds of them for this part. And so we have them. Yeah, no, I don't have a weird obsession with like setting fire to stuff. So <laughs> if anyone's wondering why, that is the reason. Um, so <laughs> I think they're in there because they're out of sight. But yeah, so this is a very comfortable armrest. The leather in here, especially in the back, um, I guess it's not really been sat in that much. It's very comfortable, it's very soft. To be honest, I've not spent much time actually in the car when it's driving back here, but yeah, perfectly comfortable. No toys or anything like that. We've got some air vents back here and there. This one's very basic, like I say, so there's no heated seats, but that was available on most models, um, as well as things like a nice suede headliner was sort of standard on the turbos and above. Big chunky handles, some lights here. That's about it, but very, very roomy, very, very spacious and um, yeah, I've never had any complaints from any passengers back here. So a lovely, lovely thing. But let's uh, let's jump into the, the new one because there's a lot more to talk about in there. Okay, and inside the 2024 KN Turbo E-Hybrid Coupe with GT package. I think I've got that nailed now. Uh, it's very different. Where do we even start? There's so much more to talk about. So many noises of things switching on before I've even put any sort of key in the ignition. There is no ignition, it's just a start stop button now. But you'll notice that's in the same place as where the keyhole slot is in the original KN. And also you'll notice the big grab handles in the middle. There's a lot of similarities between the two, which I really like because a lot of cars, a bit like Range Rover actually over the years, sort of lose their distinction and lose their charm and personality, but they've kept a lot of those features with this newest generation of KN. Yeah, the big grab handles, the start stop is in exactly the same place. One thing that is still the same though, is the dials in front, although it's now digital, you can change the configuration. You can have three dials set up like I've got or a map in the middle, or you can go back to the original five dials like this, a bit like what I've got in my KN. It feels, we could be in a Taycan or we could be in a, a Panamera. It doesn't feel like an off-roader this thing, despite the fact we have got off-road suspension. This in fact has got air suspension. If we flick this Manatino switch across into off mode, the car will start to raise. We can choose from gravel, mud, sand, and rocks. We have adaptive cruise control, paddles on the back of the wheel, everything else as you would expect it. And a nice array of buttons, sort of buttons, not buttons actually. This is one big panel, this piece of plastic here. Um, never really a fan of this sort of thing, but it's much better than having it all digitalized. And this still clicks like a car with buttons, which I can proudly say is very intuitive to use. So I've had no problems with this and I actually quite like it because although it's one panel, it just feels like buttons. And even for the temperature controls, we still have physical toggles. So it makes adjusting the air conditioning, getting your heated seats and things like that, very easy, still a physical knob for your radio volume there. And inside here, a nice wireless charging dock and some storage. The seats are also very comfortable in this, but a lot more huggy. And one thing you may not have noticed already, now we have got this lovely screen in the middle, which is really large actually. I don't know the size, but it feels bigger than previous Porsche models I've had. Um, of course, Apple CarPlay, that's wireless. Lots and lots of stuff we could go into here with the settings. Of course, because we have the battery, we can look at our battery status here 
doesn't take too long to charge this thing because it is such a small battery. But over here, there's actually another display. Just like Ferrari, I think, first did back in the day with GTC4 Lusso, although that was very small, we actually have a really large passenger display, which I can't really see from this side of the car. You can do things like watching YouTube on here, so it's probably just as well from where I'm sitting I'm not able to see what's on this screen. But uh, my wife was having some fun with this yesterday. She can choose music, she can mess around with what I'm trying to listen to, which is very annoying. And yeah, there's lots of other things you can do on here. So that's a really nice thing to have. I do love all the materials in here. That's one thing with Porsche that you always have to give them credit for. They are just extraordinarily good at putting the right materials in the right places. All the touch points are wonderful. The steering wheel feels fantastic. It's trimmed in Alcantara. We've got that continued all along here with beautiful stitching and then this carbon trim, which I love. Let's lastly have a quick look in the back of this Coupe KN. Then we can finally go for a drive, which I'm sure is probably the bit you're all been uh, waiting for. So in the back of the KN then, and actually, as I was saying, it's quite surprising looking at the profile of this thing with a sloping roof. And although the back of the roof is lower, from where I'm sitting, knee room again, that's my driving position. It's almost identical to the 955 and my view ahead, the roof's really high again, gives me loads of room above me and gives me the impression of it being a large space. There's not really much to call it between this and this. Basically in the back, it's actually the same. And I have to say, this is probably the one place where this doesn't feel it's money over my car because still got sort of not nasty, but pretty cheap plastic on the back of this. There's not much you can do down here. There's a couple of USB-C points and some air conditioning controls. Right then, let's finally get the keys to my V6, take that out for a spin, and then we'll go out in this and I'll show you what this thing is all about. <laughs> So here we are then out on the road in my V6 955KN. And I want to immediately preface this by saying, if you're in the bucket of people that's thinking about buying one of these, absolutely go for it. Because this has been one of the best cars I've ever owned. It's certainly the best daily driver I've ever had. And I've had quite a few. Uh, not only has it been really reliable, but it's just so comfortable and it can do a bit of everything. And here on these country roads in Surrey, it does indeed feel right at home. You will notice though, being bumped around a fair bit. And as I mentioned, this car doesn't have air suspension. Now when I bought it, it had 20 inch wheels and I changed them to 18s in the hope that that would improve the ride somewhat because it is very fidgety, quite bumpy, but it really didn't do it all that much. And so this car without air suspension is rather firm and for me is the main thing I actually dislike about it. It's just a bit too bumpy. Having said that, when you do find a really smooth road, which literally never happens in this country, um, it's perfect. And it almost just makes me think that Porsche designed this car for, for German roads, which for the most part are a lot smoother than this. And for, you know, sitting on the autobahn at 90, 95 miles an hour, at which this car would do perfectly because it is super smooth on those sorts of roads. But in the UK, at least without air suspension, even on 18 inch wheels, it is very bumpy. But as I mentioned, this car just has the 3.2 litre V6 engine. And as such, and this is sort of three quarters power now, it takes a rather long time to get up to the national speed limit, which in this country is 60. In fact, there it is. And if you're wondering, by the way, I have got an engine warning light on this car, not filled with it for probably six or seven months, and the engine warning light decided to come on literally a couple of days ago. Now, do you remember at the start of the video when I said that when Porsche brought this KN out, they were Porsche, the performance car company. In fact, they still are, but they wanted the KN to still have that element and hint of dynamicism that the Boxsters, the 911s had before it. And I'm pleased to report that they got that just right with this KN straight off the bat. This thing handles absolutely fantastically considering the fact it's a big old SUV. You can actually have quite a lot of fun with this thing, although it's a little bit slow. If you barrel into corners, it does respond very nicely. And as you can see the steering, now it's not as sharp as a Ferrari, but it's very, very good considering what the car is and how old it is now. Let's just do a quick 0 to 60 though, so three, two, one. 
and I think the car's a little bit confused. And there's 60. And I'll flash the time up on screen now, but it didn't exactly feel riveting, let's say that much. It was, uh, it took its time to get there, and that's what I mean with this V6. It does feel over laboured and underpowered in a car of this size, but as a daily driver, as a run around, it rarely becomes an issue for me. If I could click my fingers and switch to a 4.5 V8, I would. I think that would be the perfect balance, 340 horsepower or so. And in fact, I did do a review with one of those cars. If you want to watch that now, you can click in the top right-hand side of the screen. If you're in the market of people that's looking for a cheap winter run around, um, I can strongly, strongly recommend the 955 KN. I'd probably say to go for a 4.5 and if you fancy it, go for a turbo, because then you get all of the sort of optional extras, air suspension, quilted headliner, or Alcantara headliner as standard. And you know, you can get them also rather cheaply. So let's swap cars now. Let's jump in the new 739 PS KN Turbo E Hybrid. And um, let's take that thing for a drive, because it really is quite an insane piece of kit. So here we are in the KN, and what I love is that we're on. I've turned the car on, but we're in electric, and we can do that. Indicating 74% battery right now and 27 miles of electric range. With just one twist on the Manatino, though, we put it into sport, the engine will come alive, and we can drive away like that. But the mode that I tend to use this in the most is hybrid. Now, we have hybrid in the middle of this switch here. We can select it on the right there. Put it in hybrid, and then there's three options. We can have hybrid auto, which means the car will just decide whether we should be charging the battery or using the battery. We can force it into e-charge, which means that at a higher speed, the petrol combustion engine will charge my battery. Now that was something I was using because I didn't charge the battery at home last night. And on a 10 or so mile drive here this morning, it charged from 60% up to about 74%. It's on 74% now actually, so I think it was 74%. And uh, I didn't go above 40 miles an hour, so that was quite handy. It was charging the battery, but that comes at the expense of a little bit of fuel economy. And then we can have it in e-hold mode as well. And right off the bat, before we even leave the car park, I want to say that I, I really like this whole hybrid thing because a car that gives you choice is a good car in my opinion. As petrol heads, we want to be able to configure and change things and, and tailor cars to our exact needs. And I just love the way that we can drive an electric, but also I can flick it a switch and we've got a 70 litre fuel tank then and 250 miles of range at the moment. And it's not even full. I, I, just, I just think that's great. So main differences initially, well, you know, it feels a lot different. It does feel a lot more premium, of course. It's very smooth. That's the first noticeable thing. Um, this ride quality is is wonderful and actually the 22 inch wheels on this you know I took one look at them and I thought yeah we're gonna have the same problem as I had with my K and it's too high profile it's gonna be fidgety it's gonna be hard the ride is gonna be hard but for some reason I don't know Porsche just always managed to be magicians when it comes to ride quality it's exquisite you wouldn't know we're riding on 22 inch wheels I've got a heads-up display in front of me which is nice I love that as a new feature on lots of cars now you can get heads up display that is a great thing about technology the digital dash in front of me is fantastic there's not a complete barrage of information but there's just enough a bit like in my KN to see the thing I like it more though is if we flick it across into sport sport plus we're going to sport plus then that very efficient battery that helps us to maintain better fuel economy have a quieter ride start and not upset our neighbors in the morning transforms to be then used for the purpose of performance as as we turn left onto this national speedway road i will just demonstrate for you so i'll do about half throttle here lovely sound coming in and just yeah we're up to 60 just like that and no fuss no drama whatsoever we do have though a very enticing red button on the drive mode selector and i can see the words boost in front of me on the heads up display now if we press this red button what happens is quite extraordinary press it sport response sport plus 
gives us absolutely everything for 20 seconds. Now, if I put my foot down from 25 miles now, you'll see how quickly we get to 60. This is incredible. <laughs> Not even out of second gear, and we're already over 60 miles an hour. It is absolutely absurd power. But I think what I should really do to demonstrate the sheer performance of this car is a quick launch control. So if we, in Sport Plus, slam our foot on the brake, hold the power down, launch control activated. Oh, and there's 65. It's actually really hard to stop the car at 60 because it's just so fast. The speedo can't even keep up. It is, you know what? It is so fast. And I often shout all the time about how cars are just too fast and you don't need it. And, and that is absolutely the case with this thing. But what I love about this thing is the fact that we've got the hybrid mode. So it's not like we are constantly paying in terms of fuel economy for that performance because in hybrid mode, the thing can be quite efficient. And here we go, look, the car's gone into electric mode and we're conveniently going past a school now and we're not upsetting anyone. No one's gonna look at this thinking, oh, look at him in his expensive 700 horsepower Porsche because to the untrained eye, it probably just seems like I'm just in one of those electric cars. So that for me is the big difference. You can really choose when you want to utilize all the power. And when you don't want to be utilizing all of the power, you can then select the battery to be working more efficiently for you and be using that additional power for efficiency purposes. And that I think is really key with this. And I, I really love it. And oh, I've not even gotten to the handling of this thing yet, which I will do for you now. steering wheel like I mentioned before and that already gives it an inherently more sports like feel but just weaving from left to right really gently here you can see just how sharp and responsive this thing is it, it did blow me away a little bit when I got into the driver's seat for the first time yesterday it's just incredibly responsive and it really I mean if there's anything that masks its size and its and its relative weight this is it because you just have absolutely no idea that you're in a Cayenne. I mean, I can't actually believe that they can make cars, Porsche can make cars, um, handle this well, that are this, you know, practical and usable. We've got off-road mode, for goodness sake. We could take this off into the plains over there and have absolutely no problems, but then we can press boost when we want and put the foot down. And we've got a full-on performance car. I mean, it's just remarkable. The thing is, we've obviously got these incredible Porsche ceramic brakes as well, so we can stop as well as we can turn and accelerate. And really, I mean, it is it's really, it blows my mind. It just blows my mind how well this thing goes. It's truly astonishing. It, it really is. There's a million other things I could talk about in this, but we, we'd be here until next week because there is just so much to this car. But really, the incorporation of all this technology and over 20 years of KN has brought us to this and it and it feels leaps and bounds on from you know my car behind us. It, it really does. I mean, it's an entirely different machine. Now, don't get me wrong, this is a very expensive car and actually that KN behind me is splendid value for money if you don't want to spend the 167 grand or so and get yourself one of these as specs there are lesser e-hybrid models so you can get that technology actually for about half this price um, and I think that's a really interesting uh, thing to look into so uh, yeah if you want a car that's practical extremely fast really fun to drive but also comfortable uh, look no further this this truly is astonishing in, in all of those regards it really is the same can be said for most of those points with the KN but of course it's much older it's going to be more expensive to run probably than this and um, well it doesn't quite have the same wow factor does it so huge thank you to Porsche for throwing me the key to this car it has been a real eye-opener that hybrid system is absolutely splendid and I now I'm really intrigued and want to experience more of these hybrids because I think this potentially is the more long-term way to go when it comes to the whole car thing that's going on at the moment 
And of course, that KN, what great value for money that is. It's a wonderful car and I have no plans on selling it or changing it as my daily driver. So thank you all so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please do subscribe, give the video a thumbs up, and I hope to see you in the next one very, very soon.